Josh, thank you so much for joining us. I, I cannot count the number of times that your name was brought up in my Twitch chat from like a year ago where people were like, get this guy on, get this guy, on, especially when Kyle had just gotten out of prison. Mm-hmm. So you have, I'll say, a touch more experience with federal prison than Kyle. And by that, I mean about 30 times as much. So <laughs> can you break down like what landed you there and the surrounding situation? Because it's a fascinating situation. Uh, it's fascinating. Yeah, it definitely is fascinating. Uh, that's that's one of the many colorful adjectives we can use for it. Um, mm-hmm. glad, glad to be here, guys. I know that it did take a while, and I appreciate everybody that shouted out repeatedly trying to get me on. Uh, yes, I did. Um, I did go to prison for a little bit longer than Kyle, although we were both at Talladega, just hey, separated boy. by a few razor wires. Yeah. Um, <laughs> long story short. Let me see how I've explained this in the past. I've given the, the rundown a few times. Um, in 2012, I was playing an online video game known as RuneScape. It was one of my favorite games from age 2004 until uh, I just logged off of it an hour ago. <laughs> um, and I was very, very drunk playing uh, with a friend of mine named Anthony that was trying to download me to convince a game, me, yeah, convince me to download a game making light of a school shooting that happened in 1999. How old are you? Um, I was 19 years old at the time, I meant to say. So I was about to say that I was drunk. It wasn't legal already in and of itself Mm -hmm. because I was 19. So you began the night by committing a crime. Oh, I was already doing it big. (laughs) I was doing a victimless crime. (laughs) Yeah, the the victimless crime. uh, Not to the FBI. Um, I did not think that the video game was very funny. I did Google it. I looked it up. I did not download it. The FBI said I downloaded it. We later had to actually make a point in court to get them to take it off the record that I downloaded it because I did not, even though the judge shrugged and said he didn't know what download meant anyway. He said, you can win on that point. I don't know what download means. That's a horrible thing to run into in the middle of an internet crime. I don't understand the downloads. It means I have no possession of this game. It means I looked through the window of a store at it and walked away. Exactly, exactly. Well phrased. It's a digital equivalent. That's very, very well phrased. I I wish I would have thought to say that instead of saying, (laughs) (laughs) Oh no, I'm going to jail. (laughs) Yeah, if I would have been, you know, in a little bit of a better mindset, maybe I could have explained it better. But um, anyways, me being drunk and in those days, admittedly being a little bit more hairy on the neck, if you will. Mm-hmm. I decided that um, a third party busted in and and told me I was a dumbass for discussing this particular massacre at all, for even mentioning the name of it, and encouraged me to call him on the phone and end mm-hmm. my life with him on the phone. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's a crime, but I don't think this guy got in trouble because my drunk ass decided I said, I love that particular school shooting. Man, I'm obsessed with it. I'm going to do it <laughs> myself. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> motherfucker i'm just kidding or i said i'm being sarcastic and i have the long transcript I, I just recently moved to new orleans and my paperwork's all put up but i have the long transcript where i actually said it's called sarcasm <laughs> nonetheless four days later i also said th- some things um that school can be gravel if i have anything to say about it that word gravel becoming very important uh when it went before the grand jury mm-hmm. uh Implying because that constitutes yeah, yeah they're exactly they're it constitutes a bomb threat yeah. which uh gave me a new charge separate from the other one four <laughs> days later uh, the bomb squad, the FBI, the SWAT team, and the boys all showed up at my house. The helicopter in the sky. The bomb sniffing dogs that I didn't know existed. Um, <laughs> on October 8th of 2012, that was. And came and got me out of my mom's house with a whole lot of empty bottles of alcohol because I was not doing too great in life. And due to the fact that I was a bit of a slacker who preferred a bit of the drink and the smoke to working a good job, a big, big example was made out of me. And I ended up ultimately being sentenced to six years in federal prison most of which I served at medium high securities, excluding a violation of probation that sent me back. That is wild. And, and I'm, I'm assuming like the, the long or the length of your sentence, you say that was tied to gravel, like the bomb, the bomb aspect of it. Right. It's, it was yeah, pointed that I received six years because five years was the maximum chart, uh, statutory sentence for one of the two charges. The charges that I was faced with were transmitting threats in interstate and foreign commerce, uh, transmitting threats to kill and injure the person of another, which has a statutory maximum of five years. Now, the day before jury deliberation, when uh, I had my my lawyer came to me and said, you're either going to plead out today or you're going to take this court and get 15 years. It's your last chance. You better plead out. I plead out to the more serious charge of transmitting threats to destroy buildings by means of fire and explosives, which I could not have even gotten six years for if that was the one that Mm -hmm. I would have pled out to. As it was occurring and everything's unfolding, at, was there a certain point where you like afraid of going to prison the whole time or in the beginning where you like, this is bullshit. It's obviously a joke. Was there a moment where you're like, Oh no, this is real. Yeah. The, the moment where I started realizing that I might be in over my head, 
even though I'd already been to court multiple times at this point, was uh, two months later, a little over two months later, when the Newtown Sandy Hook massacre happened. And that was all over TV. And that was when I was like, that is very sad to begin with, but also unfortunate timing for me. Mm. And so you uh, fired up RuneScape. <laughs> and you, you, got, you got ready for a little trolling. <laughs> yeah, I, I was already in jail when the Sandy Hook happened. I was uh, sitting in a jail cell with a bunch of other dudes just watching on TV as this unfolded like, oh, they are really going to want a scapegoat for this. And uh, a lot of people have referred to me as the Rune Scapegoat, of course, uh, for taking the hit while playing RuneScape. But, um, How does um, jail compare to prison? In my personal opinion... If you got time to do prison is the way to go. One million percent. So, so much better. So much more to do. You can actually go outside and walk around and see the sunlight. Check out a guitar with your ID or whatever. So much better to do time in prison. Like if you have a year to do, trust me, I'd rather be in prison than jail. Jail's like a deck of cards and a TV and a bunch of angry men that don't know their fate yet. At least men in prison have somewhat become resigned. Y'all had fate. cards? <laughs> 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 they had gone on a hunger strike the month before to get Kool-Aid at my jail. Ooh, um, damn. Yeah, um, it was. Uh, it I was so glad to get out of jail. I didn't. Sh- I didn't shower or eat for like two days, three days, however long I was in there. I was like, "We'll get out soon. <laughs> we'll get out soon." And then another day would pass. Like, yep, for sure today, right? Surely this is going to be the end of this. Yeah, you sure. guys were were so close together, and you were both in federal prison. I was interested. I even wrote it down. I wanted oh, to were hear because Kyle, we- you. There at the same, literally there at the same identical time. No, I don't think so. I transferred out of Talladega in 2016. Okay, okay. But I was there from 14 to 16, and I did actually sit on the softball field at Talladega, like 300 yards away from you would later be, and go, bro. Do you remember that Russian guy that used to do the gun videos on YouTube? My boy was like, yeah, man, FPS Russia, that shit was crazy. He had the gun thrower, the flamethrower, and all the big guns, and I was like, yeah. And little did I know. I'll be uh, staying down there soon. Yeah, right next door. He'd be at the camp just in a few short years, which I don't really yeah. know too terribly much about the camp. I had a oh, camp, friend camp. called Atlas that came over from there, got caught with a phone. But Atlas. from what I heard, it was a relatively sweet time, right? I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think definitely cool compared to, to medium security because everyone that had come from a medium security or that medium security prison was really happy to be in the camp. Hell um, yeah, but they were. And uh, like like a lot of them were, were would tell nightmare stories of that place. And whenever somebody would get caught, they, they would be like, I hope they just put him in the hole. They don't transfer him to medium. And uh, I remember right. one day they were trying, they were picking us out to go serve lunch up there. Cause they were in lockdown. They were like, everybody's they're locked down in their cells. And so their lunch is going to be passed through on a tray and it's not going to be a regular lunch. It'll be like a peanut butter and jelly mm-hmm. sandwich. Of course. Yeah. And, uh, and so they're picking out like five or 10 of us to go up there and make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and put them through doors. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking go. And she's like, well, you don't have a choice. And I'm thinking like, I think I do probably, but I don't really want to argue this. <laughs> Let me just point out that I'm not medically cleared to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and that'll be that because that was the case. I always oh. dodged that medical clearance as like, like no matter the TB what. TB test was, or something. Why did you lie about around. having AIDS? No, I, I took the the TB <laughs> test immediately. That was like the first or second thing they did. Yeah, they stick um, that in my arm yeah. like that. Yeah, they uh, they X rayed me and then they immediately like gave me the TB thing. Um, like uh, that that was the first. I, I had forgotten all about that. But uh, but no, it was um, just medical clearance, like basic physical to make sure that you weren't going to drop Break dead. spawn mm-hmm. or something. Sweeping yeah, passing something. out the trays. Yeah. Something I was watching your recap video to get a, a full under a more full understanding of the situation. And you were answering a question about like, oh, did I drop the soap? And you said, no, all the prisons I went to, they all had their own showers. Yeah. And and you you like like i guess it's like an understood thing when you go to prison you're like i was in medium maximum so we all had our own shower meanwhile Kyle in minimum was showering in groups like in a line is right. that how it is everywhere uh when i when i caught a violation i went to a low security for the first time this still wasn't a camp so i'm not sure how they do it at camps mm-hmm. but at a low security it was basically an open shower but it had six like draw curtains and you would yeah. have to wait in a line for it, but it wasn't like open where you were actually showering. Everywhere else that I went, though, yeah, I had individual showers with some type of barrier or cloth uh, okay. for protection. Yeah, yeah, we will. had we had like four or five stalls with like concrete walls that kind of went up to here on me, like five feet tall or so. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then a shower curtain you'd pull behind. No, I noticed that like the the guys who'd done a lot of time wouldn't let anybody walk behind them. Uh, yeah, in the shower. Yeah, like, you only like, make like, that mistake once. I like, <laughs> they either want the corner one or they stand facing out. Yeah. Well, like, 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 if you were walking out, like, like, because you you would announce it, like leaving 
you know, number four or whatever, like now you got to walk behind this dude. I noticed he'd turn around, cover his dick and balls and kind of wait till you'd pass. Like, like he wouldn't, he'd wait till like you had passed by him because he knew you were about to walk behind him and he's fucking yeah. naked. Maybe I stab him. It was, it was weird that he had that muscle. Like he knows I'm not going to stab him, but it's weird that he still has that muscle memory from, mm -hmm. from where he was before. It was, uh, it's interesting thing. But yeah, I was glad there wasn't like a big room with just like spigots coming out of the wall. Cause that's what I assumed. Yeah, right, I, yeah. I had that's prepared mentally for that. Yeah, that's what my high school shower that. was like. <laughs> Just a, a chamber yeah. of hoses, basically. Yeah, it's, it's the wall. most of the places I went, it was more private than probably what like a high school so, gym has. So tell yeah. me what, what was it like? I guess there was a moment at one point where they, either your lawyer or, or someone or whatever told you or in one way or another, it became evident that you were going to do a lot of time. Like, like not just six months. There wasn't going to be community service this time around. This was going to be multiple years of federal prison. When did that occur? When you realized that that was very likely? Good question. And I will be totally honest. I didn't know until he sent it to me. Um, oh, that's brutal. My guideline range uh, recommended a maximum of two years. My guideline range was 18 to 24 months. I was sentenced to six. So when I went to sentencing, I did not act on my best behavior because I'm sitting here thinking I've got this life figured out. I'm going to go in here and be me and make my point and be a sarcastic asshole. And the worst he can do is seven months because I didn't think he was going to have the dick to give me an upward variance to sentence me more time. <laughs> His dick's 30 feet long. He sentenced me to triple. <laughs> he tripled my sentence. The boy's got cojones like basketballs. He was not afraid at all to give me that much time. You felt so. like he upped your sentence because you're an asshole? Probably, man. That's another flaw with the system. I don't have an... an suggestion to improve it man but i yeah, don't know what was going on small. through his head that day you know yeah so fuck the system. I said, hey faggot <laughs> <laughs> what did you i don't think i, I fully <laughs> grasped in what way you were an asshole how did you get your sentence triple? okay well on the sentencing day i did not go in there apologetic uh i typically keep my hair pretty long and shaggy and flippy didn't bother to cut it or trim it in any way i went in there with it kind of all in my face and i flipped my hair around and i smiled a lot and uh I didn't take it very seriously. They put me on the stand at the end because I just told my lawyer, I was like, you need to put me up there because I'm the only one who understands what went oh, down. No. They've got no idea how this happened. At least let me explain. And that just wasn't a good idea, man. I got up there and they tried to burn me on cross, uh, cross examination. Now my case isn't as black and white as I always say it is, or, or not that I always say it is as much as a headline would make it seem right. Mm -hmm. I was a pretty, I was a ne'er do well prior to my incarceration. I was known for drugs and drinking and, you know, being, I dropped out of high school, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and another thing that I was interested in at the time was violent rap. Um, I was listening to a lot of Tyler, the creator, before I got locked up, and I grew up listening to Eminem. And I had my hands in that at the time. And so part of my little fun was I would write these violent raps when I was oh, in jail no. to entertain myself. <laughs> Once again, I was just showing, you know, I was green as summer grass mm -hmm. uh, because a contact pedophile in the county jail heard that I was rapping and sent the feds after my notebooks. Got a time cut uh, so they could use these notebooks as evidence against me. So I had to defend these raps that I wrote in front of these 70-year-old men and a courtroom <laughs> full of people in my town. Um, can you, can they, you say any lyrics to the raps that you had to defend? <laughs> I, I, can, I can, but I would like to disclaim that I was 19. <laughs> I, I was very, very sarcastic. I'm still a pretty sarcastic you guy. but or... <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I'm clear enough. I'd probably just get off the beat anyway. <laughs> um, but I will say that it was a joke. This is the line that they quoted, okay? But this is a joke. I can't wait for this. It was about my situation. I was in jail for making fun of Columbine or whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, in this song, it was supposed to be a joke back and forth between me and a therapist, but the FBI got involved and it makes it sound a lot worse. But. <laughs> Okay, so it starts off and the therapist is talking about my dreams, and please remember that I'm joking again. Yeah. <sighs> oh, man. Here they come. They're going to kick my door, and I've done so much since I got out. Don't let me fall. All right, here we go. So the, the stupid voice would be the therapist. Okay. I think we're getting closer to the root of these things. So tell me, Josh, exactly what do you see in your dreams? Well, once I dreamed that Dylan Klebo from Columbine gave me his Tech 9 and pointed me up to the front line. How did you respond? Did you drop the gun? No, nah, I kicked the fucking doors down and sprayed everyone. But then the cops had to come, and so I started to run and killed a couple till I ran out of ammo and screamed, done. And then there's a little bit more, and then I had a section about how sad I was. <laughs> Dude, those are sick lines. <laughs> and they didn't, they didn't like that? They didn't find that humorous at all. They did not appreciate the rhyme scheme in the slightest. They, I they do. did not find that witty or intelligent. They found well, it to be serious. I think, I think maybe... 
The problem was <laughs> you allowed that to be read by a prosecutor when if you had wrapped in open court, I truly yeah. believe you would have spent would the have rest of your fucking life in prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, luckily, the prosecutor read it, so it didn't sound as bad as when I rhyme oh it make it gleeful. God. <laughs> um, they didn't refer to them as raps. They referred to those as personal notes and drawings is what they Jesus said. They, they would not, re they would not call them lyrics. They wouldn't call them anything other than personal notes is what they yeah, referred they to. They called them mini manifestos. <laughs> yeah. That, that was kind of the implication man. was that I had basically written down everything I intended to do when it was clear the whole song was a joke. Um, and I had another section that they intentionally misread in the same song where I was actually lamenting gun violence. Ironically, um, I said last month, some dude named Adam up in Newtown tore the wings from 20 angels and they crashed to the ground. And he read that part and he goes, now that was Mr. Adam Lanza in Newtown, right? Because I was in jail when that happened. And I said, yes. And he said, so you were just laughing at this. You're laughing about Mr. Adam Lanza killing these children. And I said, the very next sentence says humanity is beautiful and strong, but at the same time, we're fucking, I, I go on an anti-gun rant about how mm -hmm. I wish that people would stop hurting each other. And that it's crazy that that shit's still happening. They did not read that. They completely ignored that. Uh, in that therapy song that I was just rapping, there was a line. Uh, first off, when they first confiscated my shit, they highlighted the offensive parts, photocopied it for evidence, and sent it back to me. They must have run out of highlighters. Because when they <laughs> gave me back the stack of paper, like legit, the whole first like 14 pages were just covered in highlighter. And then I guess they just gave up. Because after that, it was equally bad. But um, in the therapy one, I made a joke about how my, my mom is openly married to a woman. And I said in there uh, that I, I hit, I, what did I say? On a whim, I'm liable to hit a bitch in the chin. Not bitches like females. I never hurt them. My mom seems to have a preference for women over men. So that part where I said I don't hit women was not highlighted. <laughs> <laughs> the part where I said my mom's married to a woman was highlighted. That's offensive. <laughs> Literally <laughs> everything on the whole page except for I don't hit women was highlighted. Let me just say that effectively is highlighting that one sentence. If you highlight everything but that, mm -hmm. it's pretty it's, much it, highlighted. It's essentially it. deleting the, 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 that, that one sentence and leaving yeah. everything else behind. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Jesus Christ. That's, well, that's absurd. That must have been a really fun trial to watch if you weren't about to go to prison. If, if like, like, there'd be a fly yeah. on the wall there, that could that would have been fun to watch. Like my like, friends laughed the at the Columbine line. TV. Oh. I had friends in the courtroom and they laughed at the Columbine oh, line. No. I don't think that helped my case. Oh, oh. I, I, oh no. Oh yeah, no. You they friends? thought the rap was funny and they were probably trying to help me. I mean, I didn't specifically bring anybody. I'd been in jail for 17 months. I didn't make bonds, so I mean who showed up, who showed up, you know, and my friends were there to support me and they thought it'd be a good idea to laugh openly at that line. And I was like, look, Shit. I know that I wrote it to be funny, but now it's not the fucking time <laughs> for us to be laughing at this. That is. Wasn't that the is time fucking... for me to be writing about it, to be fair. And they actually, nope. that shows you the feds priorities. They had no evidence on me suggesting that I was actually going to do it. And so they uh, gave a pedophile a time cut to get raps that I wrote. Completely fictional. Perhaps. That is wild. Like bullshit that the pedophile is the winner in this thing. And he was the a contact room state player is the, is the guy that we're focused on. But yeah. yeah. What it, are the feds doing? That guy like raped a kid and he got like a year off or something to sell you down the river. Probably more than a year. He probably got a 50. You know, here we, here we are talking about how cases can be nuanced, right? How, how you don't always hear the full story. And yet we're railing against this pedophile. We don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's a strong point. You have no idea how hot that kid is, Taylor. Thank you. Thank oh, you. God. <laughs> maybe maybe it's one of those gymnasts. The guy's kids. also a snitch. He's a pedophile <laughs> and a snitch. He's the two worst things that you can be in there. He's a pedo snitch. What I'm hearing is He's the man has down. good taste and he likes to tell a story. Okay? Sounds pretty familiar. <laughs> he likes to, to me. tell a story. <laughs> right? Tell stories is good. It depends who we tell and, the fucking story to. And now he's back, you know, casting in Hollywood. Probably. <laughs> is what he's, doing. he's back good working at Nickelodeon him. again now. And that's how Bill Cosby got out of prison. <laughs> he's casting the next Plot Sandlot twist. as we speak. Plot um, twist. Oh, good. Sandlot 7. Little rascals. <laughs> Still little sanding. Rats. Littler rascals. <laughs> oh, God. Little rascals, the big secret. Dot, dot, so, dot. So, Josh, now you're. In, uh, Taylor, did you want to lead? Yeah, I, I had you mentioned you said like in passing, I spent a lot of time in that shoe. Yeah. Shoe being the solitary confinement thing. Can you explain what put you there and how much time total you think you spent? Uh the first time that I went to the shoe at Talladega, um man, the very first time, what was it? It was something really stupid, I want to say. I think it was for a rolling paper. I can't think was that the first time? Um you take brown napkins and you add maple syrup and a little bit of jelly to them and then whenever you roll up either cigarettes or k2 spice or whatever they're smoking it'll burn like a cigar real slow and sweet you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh we would pre-make those we just took a soap dish and we would mix the syrup with with 
you know, the jelly in a soap dish like this, and then we'd rip up napkin and just lay it in there. So whenever we want on one, we can just pull it out. Well, technically, that's contraband to mix up your stuff that you already have. You can oh, have yeah. napkins yeah. and syrup and jelly, but when you put them together in a certain order, it's a 300 series shot. Can I, can I quickly jump in and give you an even more ridiculous example of contraband? Um, sure. A guy had they, they had these little rolls of like Oreo style cookies, but they're in a sleeve, like a single sleeve, mm-hmm. and that like plastic shit. And you open it, there's no resealing that, right? So right. this guy had taken his leftover cookies and he had put them in like a Folgers freeze dried crystals like plastic thing mm-hmm. that was like like this big. Like that was contraband. Wrong, Kate. <laughs> wrong. Uh, He's yeah, got packaging. cookies stored in the coffee jar, <laughs> and and it wasn't like some like shitty was guard crazy. was like making a big deal out of it. The warden. <laughs> the warden is, he would be the one i'm like peek her i'm peeking over the wall at her and she's just like contraband and i'm like those are van- i didn't say this but in my head i'm like those are vanilla cookies maybe i should go through my shit again <laughs> yeah i know right yeah <laughs> okay Putting vanilla cookies, cookies are in no a coffee jar made them uh-huh. contraband he just probably didn't want them to get stale that's yeah, exactly why they were there. yeah it's, a, it's simple he just didn't want to eat all the cookies right now yeah, but that's incorrect packaging. That's the same contraband series shot that I'm talking about. 300 series is like it's a it's a 332 or something. It's like one of the most minor shots These that you can get. But technically, they have the million. option to put you in the shoe or not. And if it's pretty low in there, they'll do it to justify the pay of the guy that has to hand out the trays. Uh, and I was in there for like nine days over that, and ended up I think losing 30 days of commissary privileges uh, for a napkin with some jelly on it. Um, was that another your time? Stretch, got caught with some tobacco. No, uh, the end of my sentence when I was at a prison in Florida, I ended up doing like four months in there because um, I actually ended up getting caught with a an actually contraband substance on my way to the rec yard that wasn't okay. even mine at the time. We'll, we'll get to that one. I'm sorry I cut you off. The tobacco one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the tobacco one, they got three-man cells at the medium. Mm-hmm. One, one of the four blocks is three-man. That's where you go when you get off the bus, and all the nicer cells are two man. And eventually, ostensibly, what you want is for one of their cellmates to leave. They say, "Hey, you're cool. You come stay in the two man with me. You get out of the three man." Well, uh, the three man cells get packed. Obviously, three men are legally not supposed to live in one. But mm-hmm. uh, they call a child one day, and I went to go into my cell uh, to get my ID to scan for food, and there and a guy that was going to sell me a cigarette was standing there. So I said, "Hey, man, come in here real quick." And he steps into my cell. My cellmates come in to get their card. So there's four of us in a three man cell, and a lieutenant happened to be in the block. And he's like, Why are there so many people in that fucking cell over there? Hey, what are y'all doing over here? And he comes running in, just being an absolute like Barney Simpsons Fife. character. <laughs> Dude, he really, that is what he sounded like. And his name was, his name, oh, I can't say his name. I forgot. He yeah. shared a name with a very popular Simpsons cartoon character, and it was pretty fucking fitting, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> Clancy Wiggum. <laughs> the dude was, <laughs> the dude was an absolute spaz, and he found cigarettes on the one guy, and all four of us went to the hole for like fucking three weeks. Um, Jesus. Until we finally got to go to the disciplinary committee that was super harsh on us all. We all got the possession of tobacco, even though one guy had it in his pocket. It was completely outrageous. Oh, and also, whenever they did that, they shook down our cell, and they found a tiny pinch, like two flakes of tobacco in the trash can. Caught us slipping. And so we actually had two tobacco shots for that. I mean, we're talking a pinch that somebody dusted off a piece of paper after they rolled up a cigarette. You that know? sucks. Um, and then I did end up at Talladega, I mean, at Mariana, Florida, doing several months uh, straight in solitary confinement because I got caught with Suboxone on uh, on my way to the rec yard. What is Suboxone? What's that? It is a medicine for uh, recovering opiate addicts, but if you're not addicted to opiates, it feels like you're on opiates. And it's there wasn't a drug test for it at that time, like so it was really popular. Exactly the same as met- methadone. Oh, I think okay. it's the same. Uh, I think it might be the same chemical, buprenorphine. Okay. Um, I think it's almost the exact same thing. But yeah, methadone, Suboxone, it's pretty much the same thing, except for you know those Listerine mm-hmm. mouth strips that you touch. Yeah, in the yeah. Like, that's the consistency of Suboxone. So you just take like a little sliver of it, put it on your tongue, and ta-da, it feels like you're on pills or whatever. And I happen to have some in my pocket. Got caught with it, and instead of transferring me to another prison, since I was only four months away, I just ended up doing the rest of the time in the shoe, and it sucked. Just so what, sitting there. <laughs> what kind of is there a TV? Can you get books in there? Is there anything to do in the shoe? Once a week, they bring around a cart of books. Most of the time, they're missing their last pages or they're ripped in half, something like that. You know. Oh, um, that other sucks. than that, you got a cellmate. You got a celly, a bunk bed, and a toilet sink. You have a celly in the shoe. That's like- yeah. I didn't know that. You can technically refuse one, but you'll get in more trouble for that. And I wasn't there to, you know, start any fires. I had a good cellmate. I liked him. We got along fine. Solitary confinement. That doesn't mean what I think it means. Right, right. Well, in this case, this is, we call it solitary. It's really the shoe, the special housing unit. 
Solitary in this case is more of a nickname for it. I think in state prisons, mm-hmm. you will actually be by yourself, but solitary or the shoe or the pocket or the side bucket, just a lot of nicknames for it. Huh. Okay. Now, what about but, violence? Like, did you have to join a gang to feel like you were protected? Did How did you stay away from trouble? So I personally did not join any gangs. Uh, the Talladega medium high security had a lot of independence. So you have cars, which is basically a gang of people that aren't in a gang. Yeah. It's, it's like the, an the Oz, way to the weird it. people. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, you got the clicks to stick together. But then cars are also divided by region, like the North Mississippi car, the Mississippi car as a whole. You know, like I was from Mississippi and I'm in prison in Alabama. I'm technically already in the Mississippi car. But um, Talladega had a lot of independence in that car. And so basically what you do is you go to the guy that is the shot caller for the independence. They don't really need a shot caller because they don't do anything. Mm-hmm. The independents don't start any bullshit. Uh, show them your paperwork. I'm not a snitch. I'm not a sex offender, whatever. He says, okay, cool. Here's where we sit in the chow hall. Make sure you're riding with us. And then if you do have any problems, uh, for example, one time I went to buy stamps from a gang member and he tried to short me uh, about 20 bucks worth of stamps. Instead of me handling that and getting killed by all of them, I went and talked to my shot caller. He went and talked to their shot caller. They got me the money. The dude fessed up was like, yeah, okay. I tried to, I, I, I miscounted. It was an accident. They gave me the money. No problems. No issues happen. And that's essentially okay. as far as the protection went. You just can't really haul off and go fight somebody on your own terms because if they're in a game, then they can all focus on you. And then I don't have anybody, you know, that's got mm-hmm. my back. Now it's a 250 people versus me, and I'm obviously going to die. My kidney's going to be on the floor or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no, I, de- I didn't have to join a gang. I'm not affiliated with any gang. I did not bang like I was tough in there. I don't try to, you know, mm-hmm. talk tough out here. I kept my head down, played guitar, uh, spent an unfortunate amount of time getting high the first time that I was <laughs> locked up. And minded my business, man. I did not ever the feel the need for protection or anything. How was the guitar received? Like, if I was near you, I would be so joyful that someone was making actual music. Yeah, like that as long as you were good. What if he's awful? Oh, then you probably get beat up. <laughs> well, I was already fairly adept as far as fingers go. I studied theory while I was in there, and I'm one million times better than I was before. I practiced seven hours a day for four years of that or whatever, you know. So I hope I got better. Um, but you would just go to the rec yard and you would turn in your prison ID. And if you turned it into them, they could give you a guitar and they do that to keep up with who's taking the strings off. Just in case anybody tried to steal a string for a tattoo needle, you just Mm -hmm. turn that puppy in right there. As you can see, I looked a lot different, even though it won't go in focus. That is my (laughs) authentic prison ID right there from when I arrived at Talladega in 2014. Give them this, they hand you a guitar, go play for a while, turn it back in. And once per week, you get an hour in the band room. If you've got a few bandmates, where they have a shitty drum set, a 50-watt amp, only acoustic guitar, so you have to put external pickups under the strings, which sounds awful, especially if you're trying to play rock music, and do the best that you can. And I had a great time in there, and it really got me through it, and I really learned to use the music as a catharsis, and that was my number one focus while I was in there, which is writing Were and playing you, uh, music. Did, did you ever form a band of inmates, or was it always you solo in there playing? No, I was in bands the whole time of my incarceration. That's awesome. I was in what, like were some of the name, bands. what were some of the names of the bands? <laughs> Oh, well, one of them, we just we called ourselves FCI. That was actually my band where I was doing vocals and guitar and I had a bass player and a drummer, both of whom were recently released. So uh, if you uh, guys check out my YouTube channel, look out for that content coming soon. All right. Um, In the band back together. What, what does Did FCI ever- stand for? Yeah. That was the thing. So it, with FCI, we would just change it every single time because obviously it's Federal Correctional Institute because yeah. we're at the FCI Talladega. But we would say like, fucking cheat immediately the fractured cranium incident. Like uh, <laughs> my boy had like a long list of it. We would just come up with the dumbest shit um that's fun we spent a while as the sofa kings that was pretty generic that wasn't my band that was another one you know like so fucking ha ha yeah. the sofa kings everybody thought was funny uh seven books shy which actually you remember that incident i told you earlier where i was that guy tried mm-hmm. to rip me off for some stamps yeah when i counted it it was seven books shy of what it was supposed to be and i remember telling my boy about what happened he was like what went down man and i was like i bought some stamps from homeboy and it was seven books shy and they were like that's the next band name right there. <laughs> that shit sounds sick. That's lit as fuck. We're going to do that. And I was like, all right, cool. But no, man, we actually boogied the fuck down in there. We're, there I got in some really good bands while I was in prison. Like, you when dudes got nothing to do with practice. I like it. I love that. You would be absolutely amazed, man. I mean, we we did a whole lot of songs in there. I mean, pretty much just dad rock and radio rock staples. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Just the but typical, played, the crazy Dad, trains. Tell me you played Jailhouse Rock at least a little. No, I didn't play Jailhouse Fuck Rock. You, I did do Folsom <laughs> Prison Blues. I did Folsom Prison Blues, though. We okay, didn't do Jailhouse right. Rock. That's Jailhouse you Rock would have been better. There? But... Is it possible you could just play anything? Just What, when we were in there, or you mean right nope. now? Right now. Well, let me see here. I, I think I probably could if you guys want me to. Yeah, I'm gonna play it too well, and we're gonna get struck. No, like, like Woody, <laughs> Woody and I are both fascinated by by people who speak multiple language languages and can pick up an instrument and make it make music. 
Yeah, it's a thing is... that we can't do, and we're jealous. <laughs> I learned pretty good Spanish while I was in there on that note. God damn. That's Stop awesome. bragging. All right, we'll play we a fucking to... Spanish song, asshole. <laughs> Make us feel real bad. <laughs> play Despacito. <laughs> <laughs> la 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 might be a little loud too. No, it sounds pretty good. I, just All right, I'm trying to think. I mean, tune. oh, we got unplugged one time for playing a particular song. We actually got unplugged. You do play concerts in there. You play in, concerts in the middle of the a inmates? concert. They just shut you down, made you silent. They unplugged you. They literally pulled the power out. I'm a little out of tune here. You guys were rocking too hard. What was about the subject matter? Apparently. If I could ever get this denoted too. Was it Columbine again? <laughs> <laughs> no, that would have been a way better story. Doubling down. The Columbine blues. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is what we started off with. And they pulled the plug on us about the middle part. We started off with, comes in with a big four of these. Two, two three, four. Three, three, four. And this song was actually removed from the prison if you three players, so we should know. Uh, Anybody recognize it yet? Yeah. I wish I could play an instrument. That's great. <laughs> yeah, this guy actually has talent. And he learned it in prison. Oh. I haven't been in prison the past six years, and I don't know how to do anything. Killing in the name of! <laughs> <laughs> they were like, no! No! <laughs> we're going to do a joke, though. We're going to do a joke. All right, we're going to do this part. Hold on, let me think. So we're coming in with that next part. It goes with the... Now you do what they told you. Now you do what they told you, right? Yeah. But we're going to do the, yes, sir, I will do what you tell me. Yes, sir, I will do what you tell me. Yes, sir, I will do what you tell me. Yes, sir, I will do what you tell me. But they didn't even let us get to that part. Once we got to, oh, so no. those the workforces are the same that burn crosses. The cross burners immediately pulled the plug on it. They were like, no, you're not calling us out in front of everybody out here. Uh, that's amazing. That's awesome, man. It. Thank you for that. That's really cool. Had a lot of time to practice. Did, Sorry, uh, I use on my Twitch streams a lot. Crazy Train Solo. Ooh, I flubbed one again. It's not that I didn't believe you, That's but it's awesome. kind of cool when you tell a story. Like, oh, I, I did nothing but play guitar and study music theory. And then it's <laughs> like, hey... As proof, why don't I jam out four different songs real quick? <laughs> Just like, bang out yeah. a few of the classics, a few of the right? See, like, yeah, it, that's it, that's unbelievably impressive, man. You, so you mentioned also you learned Spanish while you're yeah. In there. I had a foundational like conversational basis on it from high school, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, I learned how to like like talk, you know, like you would. Uh, how do I put this? I'm married now, but I'll say I learned how to mack on bitches from asking a lot about that and also like mm-hmm. drug slang and stuff like that. I learned a bunch of stuff that I wouldn't have learned in school. I can say that. <laughs> uh, I actually had to use it. My family and I just went to Disney the other day and uh, I've never been to Disney before. It was fucking incredible. I got a little nervous around all that many people because one thing that prison will show you is that people in the free world do not know how to move in big numbers. They don't know how to walk around and it's very, very stressful and anxiety inducing for those of us that know how to move with 5,000 people in a small area. Like, we know how to do it. We do it like driving, you know. People in the free world just don't give a flying shit. But mm-hmm. um, a, a little girl was sitting, they, they went to get on a ride, and a little girl was sitting with her knees on the ride like this, and they were yelling at her that she had to take her legs off the seat. She had to sit down, sit down on her butt, sit on her butt, and, the, and they were a Hispanic family. They were just like, okay, okay, como? And I actually <laughs> had to yell at them, and I was like, hey, I did say tu necesita. Or, uh, look, I already messed it up. Say, I said, hey, I did say she says, hey, I necesita, she needs. Siéntate to sit in L, and then I whispered because I don't know the word for butt in Spanish. I only know the word for ass, like which is again, like I said, I learned vulgar stuff in prison, you know. And I had to say "culo," like whispered it, you know, so that just in case he didn't want his daughter Culo. hearing some random stranger say she has to sit on her ass. And and he looked at me confused, and then he understood, and he said, "Oh," and he looked at her and said something. Siéntate, you know. And I was like, "See, prison came in handy." Like I, I didn't really know. Functioning what? Spanish like what, that. What until if Kula meant pussy and you didn't know it? <laughs> Get your little girl down on her pussy. I'm surprised he didn't rip his bar off. No, he didn't pussy. He probably just punched me out yeah. right there. You want to be dragged on that roller coaster? <laughs> Did you learn any other skills? Because I'm sure you had nothing but time. I, I, I know you said you learned a ton of music theory, mm-hmm. uh, Spanish. Was there any other interest you had? Uh, 
I mostly focus, I focus a lot on songwriting as well, as far as lyrics go and getting into things like that. But um, my big focuses were music in general, including the songwriting aspect, music theory aspect, uh, learning Spanish. And I spent a period of time as my prison hustle typing legal motions for people. And that's pretty much the consistency of my prison time. Like the, like the Shawshank Redemption? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, I just had form? to buy my own typewriter and my own typewriter ribbons. And, yeah, and those we'll go down beers were the best beers I'd ever tasted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was real life Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, I was, uh, it was like $4 a page for me to type legal motions in their double-spaced, wide-set font. So I was like, this is, this is great. Uh, I didn't come to the work myself. I was actually involved in what was basically a ring of it in prison. Uh, the Puerto Ricans were running it. And so there was like a, the top dog legal motion Puerto Rican guy. People would go to him. Hey, I need this motion at this time. He would outsource it to one of us. And then I would go type it for, you know, four to six stamps a page or whatever. He's getting paid an extra one stamp per page that I type. But I don't ever have to look for the work and I got as much as I want to do. So what everybody's made you happy. qualified to do this? Just the like, fact that I could type really fast because I've been playing RuneScape since I was 11. But how did you know <laughs> what to type? Like it, to me, the hard part of a legal motion is not. The There's a book. Thing. There's a straight up book of templates. That is it. And the Puerto Ricans pass that around. It's like a $400 book and the Puerto Ricans pass it around to each other. And that's, that's honestly it. You just enter in the name. It's like a standard stock motion oh, for so blank. Very motion. little creativity. You just put the name right, and right. type it out. For jailhouse lawyers, we're not. I'm not over here to argue a case. What you're going here for these guys is for like buy the book motions that you want to submit. We're we're not arguing anybody's case, you know. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's going to come stab us up because their life sentence got mm -hmm. affirmed or whatever. Mm -hmm. that, well, it's going to be strictly if you got the paperwork really bad. They might. Yeah, I mean, if it's just like to be honest with you, though, it's funny you say that, Kyle, because if you like get the font wrong or the typeset wrong and shit, they will reject the motion, and your deadline is still active. Like, they yeah, look for any excuse to fuck. Comic you. sense. The feds won't accept me? Blue Ink. I would do mine in Chiller to remind them how scary the situation is. Yeah, they would, they would <laughs> let that you know one. how scary. Yeah, that would probably work. No, they won't accept fucking Blue Ink. Like, like you can send in a form right. um, like, like on some gun shit that's going to take months to process, and it's been gone for three fucking months, and then you get notified that, oh, that thing you sent us three months ago, we just opened it. You used Blue Ink? And your deadline's Ooh. tomorrow, by the way. Oh. So, uh, something else I wanted to ask you, Josh. So, you in in the video I watched of you recapping all this, you said like you didn't really see a lot of any rapes or like sexual assaults, but you saw fights all the time. Oh yeah. Were you ever involved in a fight? Oh yeah, plenty of them. Tell, run, run us through a couple of those. Uh, the one that people reference the most because I did a video about it. I never got into a fight with a white crip. Uh, it ended up being a really good friend of mine. But I've got the scar tissue right here. I can still feel right there on my cheek because I did not see that dude's left hand coming at me. And uh, I, was not, <laughs> I wasn't prepared for a southpaw swing, and uh, he split my shit pretty good. Uh, pretty much every fight that I ever got in was over dumb stuff that you just can't let slide. Somebody disrespecting you in some way or another. You know, things where you have to draw a line or else the next thing you know, dudes are going to be trying to take your food or something or maybe mm -hmm. worse. Um, none of the places that I went to can I say that I think or know, I, I know or think that any sexual assaults ever happened. Um, consensual stuff definitely went on at all the prisons I was at. That's for sure. But as far as assault goes, um, I definitely don't think so. None that I was ever aware of. Um, what was the cause of that fight with the white crip? Yeah. So with him, I was supposed to give him some stamps. I owed him some stamps for something, which, you know, is the money in there. I'm sure you're aware. Mm -hmm. Um I owed him some stamps for something. I was going to visitation. It was a Saturday or Friday, which is the visitation. I guess it was a Saturday, I think. And um, I was actually going to visitation. And I went into his cell to ask his cellmate something. And I owed this guy money, but I wasn't supposed to pay him for like three more days or something. And I guess he was in a bad mood and he mentioned it. Something about how you better have my money at blank, blank time. At which point I told him, I'm going to have your money, but not because you just randomly reminded me three days ahead of when I'm going to pay you. I'm going to pay you on time because I told you I was going to pay you on time, not because you're harassing me about it. Mm -hmm. And he said something to the effect of, I'm just saying you need to have it or something, or there's going to be problems. And I said, I'm not worried about any problems. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to have your money because I said I would have your money. And at that point, he said, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. and I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said, you're a pussy. And he said that in front of another guy. And that is a big no-no. And so I swung on him and I hit him right in the ear and I split his ear. He had Carip tattooed in his ear right here and I split the R. So now it says Cape, C I A I P. <laughs> <laughs> Completely lucky punch. I wasn't necessarily aiming for his ear or anything, but it split pretty good. Uh, he turned yeah. around and we duked up a little bit and I was feeling pretty good about it. I remember landing a few good, mean ones and not paying any attention to that left hand. And when that dude got that left around there, it's probably the hardest I've ever been punched in the face the entire life. And it completely 
completely rattled me. Uh, he almost split my cheek. He almost split my cheek all the way through, like my teeth. Did you drop? Uh, I grappled him because I was I was dizzy as shit. When I grappled him, we fell down over the edge of the bed because let me tell you, fighting in a cell the size of much smaller than the space that I'm sitting in right here right now, 99% of the fights go to the floor anyways. Uh, mm-hmm. When I fell on the edge of the bed, I was grappling with him, and he spun around and landed on top of me. So he definitely had the upper hand, and when he jumped up, he could have been stomping all over my head or whatever, even though he was uh, barefoot because I'd come in a cell in the morning, and you know, you pretty much mm-hmm. don't ever just get caught with your socks on, I guess for reasons like this. Uh, but he was cool about it and he helped me up, you know, he didn't go to any links. So he definitely so he could have won, that won one and then stopped like a gentleman. Right, right. Yeah. No, I'll definitely say that, uh, he won it and he could have continued ruthlessly like people in prison tend to do, but he had honor mm-hmm. about it and was like, get up dog. And then he was like, Hey, fucking respect for real, you know? And I, and begrudgingly was like, I mean, I, I was in a bad mood and I called you a name and you swung at me, man. I deserved that or whatever. Two days later, he ended up moving into my cell when my cell he went to the shoe, and he was one of my best friends for the rest of the time that we were there. <laughs> yeah, because you already got the fight out of the way. That's like that was like a hockey yeah. fight. You guys we, touched gloves at the end. We didn't really not like each other before that, but after that, we were cool. You know, there was a mutual respect there, even though my face swelled up like a grapefruit on this side, dude. <laughs> and then I went to visitation with my teeth all pink and bloody, man, and my elbow was busted up. My elbow still don't look right. I don't know if I can hit the right angle, but I see it though. Yeah, this yeah, elbow has up. seen the ground many times, grappling up in small prison cell fights. You see how it's got that hook on it? You can yeah. tell that. Yeah. Uh, that's how, like I said, they normally end up on the ground. So I, then, uh, okay to lose a fight is my question. Like it, it sounds now this one, clearly it was okay to lose. You guys had respect, but in general, if you, if prisoners see someone stand up for themselves in a fight, they can't win and don't win. That guy comes out looking okay, right? Absolutely. They don't give a flying shit. If you win, lose, can't fight, can fight. They care that you will. Yeah. The, the number one rule is that nobody can take anything from you. If you if they know that you'll try, then you're good. They don't care if you, you know, man, that dude ran over there and got the shit kicked out of him by a dude half his size, but he wasn't scared of him at least. You know, that that they respect the fact that you go. It's not it's never about whether or not you win or lose. And that's what always trips me out when people are like, Oh, I wouldn't make it, I wouldn't make it. I'd be like, dude, within your first week or two, somebody's gonna talk shit to you. You fight them. The worst that's going to happen is you get your ass kicked and you hurt for three or four days and then you're good. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. And then like, it's like mm-hmm. uh, you pass that hazing ritual of like, okay, this guy's going to stand up for himself. You're not just going to be able right. to walk over and steal your pixie sticks or whatever. I'm 48. Have. It's going to hurt for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Still you, worth it. Still worth it. Yeah, Woody, if you ever had to go to prison, you, you look so young for a 48 year old. You would literally have to dye your hair gray going in and like pretend you were much older than you were. <laughs> the opposite of the guy on the office that was like uh, yeah. came back and reapplied like i'm 33 you'd have to do the opposite <laughs> you mentioned consensual sex in the prison what do people think of that is it bad to have consensual sex does it matter if you pitch or receive like it, interesting if, or they just let it slide like what's so up? the pitch and receive thing is actually cultural believe it or not um mm-hmm. amongst the groups that i was around and hung around any form of contact sexual contact with a man is gay you are a punk as they call it in there the leper, the pariah, to not be touched, et cetera, et cetera, all that. I, I love how the, you put quotes around having sex with a man is gay. Gay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I feel like there's a philosophical debate there, yeah, personally, but not in this sense. Like, I understand mm-hmm. what they're saying about that. Like, yeah, you got to have at least, in my opinion, I think you have to have a little bit of both ways, I guess, to even do that in the first place. Mm-hmm. I guess it doesn't necessarily make you gay, though. But that's the conversation that I had with a guy one time. Is he was like, that means you're gay. And I was like, I'm pretty sure gay means exclusively attracted to the same sex. These dudes yeah, are doing yeah. last resort because they're animals with no IQ. I don't think it inherently means <laughs> that they're gay. They just can't control their bodily functions. I see yeah. where you're coming from. Um, All right. Right. That, so so it was a, that's why I said gay, because it doesn't necessarily make you gay by definition. In my that makes opinion. more sense. I'm glad you explained right. it. Yeah, but, um, so so people would think that well, would think that they're gay, and they would be social pariahs. They, they there was no sympathy for the fact that these guys just had to get laid. Right? No, those dudes were just animals. They, they just say those dudes are fucking with the punks now. Basically, like the, the dudes started screwing around with the guys, and people don't fuck with them the same anymore. Like, don't do business with him. He's messing with the gay dudes because, unfortunately, it, the the gay the openly gay ones that are actually gay all the time are very much ostracized, and and mm-hmm. people really don't want to be seen associating with them because then rumors will fly, and then you're gonna have to beat the shit out of somebody for saying that you're getting fucked or something like that. But um, there's another culture. Uh, that comes from another country that I'm not going to shout out just in case one of them disagrees and thinks I'm calling out their whole country or whatever. But in their culture, you're only it's all it's perfectly acceptable to receive pleasure. Be that in the form of hitting it or getting it, you know, 
whatever, that's not gay to them. It's the one if you're the one that's giving the pleasure, then you're gay. So I yeah, is, is it a group of people that can be kind of sensitive about really any sort of uh anything, anything like that? Any sort of yeah, really anything. Yeah, really ironically real. seem very, very machismo and very uh-huh. very big into the bravado of you know, heterosexual males, but most of them, a lot of them, at least in prison, I don't know about the general population, shave their bodies all of and they're very... No, it's all of them. But they're getting head from, like, cute little <laughs> twinks. He knows who I'm talking about. Right, yeah, yeah but but it that's not that's hexagons. not considered gay, though. <laughs> it's not considered gay to... Am I on target? By them. But whereas with, like, the white dudes that I hung around or whatever, like, the set that I was rolling with, if you will, even though I was not affiliated... Mm-hmm. Uh, you do anything with a dude, that's like, no, bro. That's absolutely, it doesn't matter what you did or what happened or who did what. They don't give a fuck. You had that contact with a dude, you're out, you know? If, if you had so done that, what I, would you have been excised from that car, as you said, like the Mississippi car? The thing about it is, in my opinion, dudes just got a rocket, man. That's the thing about it is that when dudes are lurking around trying to sneak about it, like, bro, we all live in one big-ass building. You're not hiding a damn thing. You might as well just own up and fess up to it, like, yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like if dudes do it, then they should just at least own up to it. And I mean, I know a lifer that was in there and he had been locked up 28, 30 years before he finally started messing around with the dudes. You know what he said? He said, fuck y'all, man. I've been locked up for 30 years. Y'all can judge- <laughs> I'm doing the rest of my life in here. Y'all can judge me all the fuck you want. I do what the hell I want. I'm grown and I'm doing a life sentence. And we're like a, a short Hispanic dude at uh, when I went back on violation at the low security of uh, Forest City, Arkansas is where I went back for my violation. And I hated low security. I'd rather be at a medium all day, any day than a low. Um, and... <laughs> After I after I beat the dude up and I was walking away, number one rule of prison, don't turn your back on him. The dude got up off the ground and run around and it, from behind me punched me and split me pretty good on my other side right here on the inside. Mm. Uh, but it was much of the same. It didn't even swell up as bad as this. So, no, I didn't ever uh, – occasionally, you know, like a little purple splot, somebody hits mm-hmm. you in the forehead or something. But, no, I didn't ever take any serious injuries. The worst one was that left hook because that – I'm telling you, I swelled up like a grapefruit. I went to visitation and the guards were like, what the fuck? And I was like, I got a gum infection, bro. They were like, no, no, hold up, man. Come here. What the fuck's up with your face? I was like, I got a gum infection. Don't worry about it. And they'd let me off the hook, you know? You got like an imprint of the guy's ring. (laughs) (laughs) A championship fucking ring on my cheek, and he's letting me make it. So uh, you like medium more than low. Kyle wasn't in low. Kyle was in minimum, right? Right, camp, yeah. So why is medium medium better than low? The reason that I like medium is because they lock the door at night. As long as you got one cellmate or two cellmates that you like and you fuck with and it's good time, the door locking is good at night, man. I sleep a lot better behind a locked door than I do in an open bay. Low security was 150 men in a room, schizophrenics, drug addicts, the thieves, everything in like an open bay room, barely divided by little short cubicles. And I had a lot of trouble sleeping because I know how mental illness is after my time in prison. I don't do well sleeping around people that aren't taking medication for their mental illnesses because I've seen them flip out and lose it and attack Mm -hmm. people in their sleep that have never said a word to them. Um, just a lot cleaner at the medium. People have respect at the medium, but the low security dudes didn't have any respect because they've never been at the higher security at the pins. I've never been to the pins either, but all the other guys with me at the mediums were there and their habits rubbed off on me, you know, about respecting people, giving them their space, watching where you're smoking and shit, you know, looking out for each other and, and not stepping on the next guy's toes and not letting your toes get stepped on. At the medium, the low security is all a bunch of 20 year olds that got caught with a pistol and they're doing two years for the first time and snitched on somebody or something. Young knuckleheads that, you know, got nothing to lose in their mind. Mm-hmm. They have no respect for anybody. And they walk into people's cells and areas without asking or any acknowledgement or anything. And they crowd people. They don't know how to walk. They don't know how to act. And then we don't get any space to even sleep. It just I was watching wasn't a for me. prison YouTuber. And he was saying that when you walk past the cells, you can't look over. You can't look inside. You just nah. like, eyes train front. Right. I would struggle with that. Yeah, you're not supposed to look in people's window. If, if you need somebody and you don't know if they're in the cell or not, you don't look in their window. You walk up, you knock on the door, and you turn around and wait. If they open the door, they open. If they don't, they don't. If they're in there, oh, I don't know. Window. But yeah, you're not, you're not supposed to be window. You're not supposed to be peeping Tom. You don't know what you might see. I'm picturing it as all yeah. bars, like kind of cages. Not these are cinder block rooms with a door and a window. Right, right. The, it's the door has a small window in it. About y'all you know, had doors, foot rectangle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The medium. It's yeah, big old thick doors. steel doors about this thick with the big old oh, rolling I, padlock. Oh, I've seen them. They're scary as fuck. Um, we we had that bay situation with all the like the cubicles or whatever, yep, with no roof bay. and just no door, and anybody could walk in there and stab you at night. But nobody's yep. doing that over there anyway. I didn't see any crazies. <laughs> uh, there was nobody in my. Uh, There's like I don't know, eighty or a hundred of us in that one in each um, dorm, and there weren't there weren't any crazies that I saw. Um, the mentally ill trend towards violent crime. So that might be why there were so many sense. more at the mediums. A lot of the people that I was in there with had had come down for good behavior and like earned their way down there. Mm-hmm. So they, they were doing like the last five to seven years of a much right. longer stint. Um, and they were, and they were glad to be there. 
yeah, everybody was older and, and, and pretty relaxed for the most part. Um, there was a couple of young guys, um, and immediately one of them got t- taken to the shoe, and I never saw him again. Yeah, the young guys are the ones that get on my nerves. I, he, me, I went in when I was 19, so I was one of those guys once. I, 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 I was trying – you mentioned like looking into the cells like, like – I didn't want to see anything because because <laughs> you might see Never somebody know. doing some criminal shit or some violent shit or some stuff that you're just not supposed to know about yeah. or maybe just some might, might see some embarrassing shit that you're not shit supposed you to know can't about. Unsee either when way. When I said it, I would struggle. It was really about the cage situation where it catches your eye and you have to willingly not see what you kind of saw. Yeah, I think right. I could not look through doors with windows. Either. Yeah, it's a little different. It's it's harder yeah. in jail when you're in a big open area, but. Yeah, in prison, you actually have to be looking for it. There were plenty of times where I was walking past the cell, and you can hear dudes thumping against the wall, fighting in there and stuff. Just keep on walking. That is not my business, especially because if somebody ends up snitching on them, they're going to be wondering who walked past, who looked in there. That's you know, what Sp- I was going to say Spider-Man about Spider-Man looked in. in. Yeah. You know, Spider-Man's getting stabbed up or something. That's exactly what I was going to say. Like, that, that's the biggest fear for me, Like, like that you'll look in there and you'll see something and then someone will snitch on them and they'll remember back to you looking yeah. in and seeing and like the, they'll – it's you. It's got to be it's you. It's you, 100%. Like, I get up to take a piss at like 3 a.m. And they're in there like smoking spice. And I'm like, fuck, I don't want to see you smoking spice, dude. I'm right. Like, Maybe if I avert my eyes enough, I won't know what color you are. But <laughs> then when you get back to bed, 30 seconds later, the COs walk in and, hey, nah, Kyle just went in there to go pee. I just saw him. He went to the bathroom. When he came out, the pigs were in, went in there. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, it would be no Logic bad. and reason don't work well on inmates. I can tell you that. Why would you even snitch? Like, Do you get your sentence reduced? What's the motivation no. for you just hurt people. Sometimes people don't like people smoking in the bathroom because they got to smell it. You know, just grumpy old people want to ruin somebody else's time and they'll go snitch or something like that. Uh, they have to be really covert about it. I could say that even at a low security, you'll get the shit kicked out of them for snitching. Mm. There was well, a dude at the that. low security that was actually getting paid to snitch and they fucked up because the, the lieutenant went and pretended to shake down the guy's cell and left a large quantity of stamps in his locker. And everybody saw him out in front of God, and everybody put like $100 worth of stamps in this dude's locker. As soon as that guy got back to his bed, he got his jaw kicked off just about and got sent to another prison. Damn. So and having eyes is pretty dangerous. His, didn't even didn't get to even spend, spend his stamps. His nope. stamps. I'm Damn. pretty sure they just took his stamps. Are those uh, inmates got him anyway. transferable to dental credits? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to need them. I love that. We took his stamps, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and we took a stance. You can get this bitch out of here. They it's roll them out. It's such an awful place. Prison is awful. Like, like I know it's it for, is. The idea is it's for awful people. But yeah. there's there aren't that many awful people, like truly I, awful. I've people. had more good ass normal dudes in there than I met criminals, like like stereotypical criminals. Everybody mm-hmm. in there was so nice. Like you would never know that like they had done anything wrong. Um it'll change most, your perspective. Yeah, everybody in there was so nice and just just normal and just wanting and most of them had like big plans for the future about businesses and family and relationships and stuff and they just wanted to get out. Yep, they just need their chance. A lot of them, they just need another chance. Or some, some of them have had their chances, to be fair, because plenty of dudes at the medium are doing life bids on their eighth time in prison and shit. But there was a ton of contraband. Um, it was so easy. I, I know at one point they told me there wasn't even a big razor wire fence there at Talladega, at least on the camp side, but uh, the there was when I was there, but I think they were just oh. droning things in and throwing yeah. things over the fence. It was so easy because it, mm-hmm. it wasn't like to approach the fence. There was another layer of security. It's not like an onion type scenario. It's <laughs> yeah, like, it's just a fence. You can kind of walk up to the prison if you want to. Be like, hey, this is the prison. And like, look, you, you could like look through the, the, yep. the, 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 just the thing through the or gate. whatever. But uh, so I think they were throwing stuff over over because there was mm-hmm. no one making wine. As people people have asked me before, like, did they make that toilet wine? It's like. They've got Jose Cuervo and like like like, got like <laughs> name brand like bottles of, of of liquor in there. Yeah, I've heard that about the camp. I heard y'all had free world food and free world liquor and all kinds of stuff. They were telling me about the camp in it or, or either the low or the camp in Atlanta, one or the other, like where they had come from before. And they said it was wild there that they were sneaking whores in. They were yeah. sneaking prostitutes in, and that they were they were sneaking out at night and they would That's pay impressive. someone. They would That's pay Atlanta someone. Camp. They would pay someone to come and like get in their bed. Yep. Um, while they went out and like party and got laid at a motel um, down the road, a- would they, they would sneak them in like over the fence or through the non-existent fence. I, I, I don't, don't recall. I don't think they, w- would they sneak a prostitute in in some guy's asshole? The- <laughs> <laughs> <Ironic>. <laughs> like on the South Park episode? Yeah. No, they, they would they would bring girls in and they would bring homeless people in to to, to get in, in their beds. beds. For so the if the camp. guard came through and looked for the bed count, 
because they come through like regularly in the night. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of like Count the worst everybody. part about getting your sleep is that like yes, flashlight someone, your face every hour, like every hour. Like, Jesus like, it's Christ, awful. how are you not supposed to get in fights and be cranky if you're woken up every <laughs> hour? I know, right? You just wrap your head up in a anyway. Um, <laughs> they sound, it sounded like they were having a good time, but but it was pretty lax where we were for the most part. Yeah, I've heard tour- stories about the camp. I heard you all had phones over there real easy and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, lots of phones um, and just tons of cigarettes. Nobody I was saw really... one phone at Talladega Medium, and it was a watch phone. Oh, shit. The whole no. time I was there, people aren't fucking with that extra year at the Medium, you know, and there's nowhere to hide it. They were, um, like, like you'd go in the bathroom at, like, before lights were out, like, like, like and there'd be, you'd hear guys talking on the phone in the, in the toilets and stuff, like in the stalls. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, but, like, everybody had a cell phone that wanted one. Um, there'd be chargers everywhere and fucking people wanting to charge shit in your cell and you have to tell them no, because yeah. they would, they'd, they'd want to charge their shit in your cell. And like now you're you get the time if you get fucking, caught. Yeah. 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 Fuck so, that. They so they'll add, no they'll add how much time where you were, uh, Kyle? The, the rule of thumb that I've been told is a year for a phone. I have but, no but, idea. I certainly didn't have a phone. Does, does getting in a fight add <laughs> time to your stay? Um, it doesn't add time in that same sense, but it can remove your good time. You can lose your 52 days a year for good behavior that is automatically removed. Uh, I lost a lot of my good time for dumb shit. Like when I got caught with the rolling paper, I lost 52 days of good time. Um, That's, uh, you're not really tripping about it until you get to the end of your sentence and you get to 52 days left until you're released. And you're like, son of a bitch, I would have been yeah. home right now. <laughs> it's like the movie Blow, literally, where he's like, I went yeah. in with a that really is bachelor's how it is, in weed and came out with a master's in cocaine. That is how it is. Like I've never in my entire life made or cooked in any way methamphetamine, but I damn sure know 20 different ways to do it now. I can tell you it, that. That's white yeah. dude's favorite fucking thing to talk about in prison is meth recipes. <laughs> white guys love meth. We love it. Apparently right. so. I, I never be, knew until we went to the prison. Away from it just, just because, like, like, like it's, it's clearly. Because apparently it's, it's made for us. It's so good. It must be so fucking good. Every because, white dude in prison is meth, 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 just all the time. Like, man, no, what do you do? You get your Sudafed, man, you take a Mountain Dew bottle, right? You got to get a Mountain Dew bottle. You got to put the lie in just like this. They will sit there and talk about that shit for five days. Jesus Christ. Another no. thing that I learned is don't let meth heads tell you a story because their stories <laughs> cover 42 days where they didn't sleep. <laughs> and it's a 12 hour long story because it was a month long story of them doing meth and not sleeping. So they're like, man, on the first day and then like four hours later, like, right. And then on the 32nd day, man, we went to the beach, right? When we showed up, I had my metal detector right now. I was tweaking, bro. I was looking for copper wire. <laughs> Dude, I'm so tired of this story. The story sucks. And it takes a year because don't, don't let meth heads tell you stories about the times that they were on meth. They were way too long. I don't know why you'd want to do meth in prison, though. Anyway, I, I would, I would definitely want weed or like an opiate. I'd want to like yeah. numb the yes. fuck out. Seems like I an agree. upper would stress you out more. Like yeah, at night, I mean, especially like if, if you could like as soon as lights go out, if you could like get fucked up and just just not wake up until you had to be out of your your bed, like that would be demolition man type you shit. You would have enjoyed your prison term a lot more if you could bring pot. No shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would have been okay. Everybody's prison term would be a lot you better. That's why they drug Everybody else on pot, too, is I'm processing this. It'd be so chill. The tweakers in prison actually do cool shit, though. I saw a dude take apart and remake an entire radio with speakers in his cell. Like, he put up <laughs> ghetto speakers that he built into these little boxes. Like, he had these plastic boxes from commissary, and he built working speakers, hung them up by his door, and when you'd open the door... It was automatically like you come into just slick Rick, right? A tat tat, and an old. The cops scattered, and it's just bumping, <laughs> <laughs> rattle in the cell. And you're like, this is actually kind of cool. And he's over here like, yeah, man, that only took me like four hours, man. You know, check it out. <laughs> so I made this soldering iron out of this pencil. I got this pencil and a plug in and a paper clip right here, and it actually made a really cool soldering iron. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna catch you later. <laughs> well, that speaker shit, that's cool. Maybe you can make me cool. one. Just, just don't start a story. A story. <laughs> but yeah, yes. before you get started on telling me some shit, I really don't care about that happened in 2006. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna slowly back away from the tweakers because they won't let you go. That's so funny. And their cell would be spotless too because the door would lock at night. And now they've got like seven hours where they have to be in this confined area and they're on meth and they're not sleeping. Like, look, like, hand me the toothbrush, bro. I, I was surprised imagine. how big of a deal cleanliness was. It seems Huge. like we always we clean. We did nothing but clean. Mm-hmm. We were just always cleaning, and it was like, I mean, we couldn't leave a little mess till morning, right? Like just till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> everything was always so fucking clean there's no dust in that place there's no no, no absolutely so, not it's your living quarters so people take it really seriously you, you know, know the keep big it clean, like it, floor it buffers day. you know yeah. the big like the you plug in the wall the that that happens every day literally every method day of control at all like like me telling you that you needed to keep your place so fucking spotless is that me like dom subbing you for what it's worth most of the time it's the inmates that 
care about the cleanliness so much. So. Can you can you buy like can you buy like baby oil at the commissary? <laughs> you used to be able to, but you Vaseline? can make amazing can tattoo I, can ink I out of it. Slick myself up naked. You have to use some Vaseline, not baby oil. They took the baby oil off because people were making really good tattoo ink with it. Vaseline makes equally good tattoo. Really, ink, in my you, you can make tattoo ink out of baby oil. Yeah, you burn it same as you do with Vaseline. You basically make a wick with toilet paper. Um, <laughs> Allow it to, I was twisting this toilet paper up earlier. If you twist it into like a small wick, completely saturate it with Vaseline or baby oil and set it upright in a container with some kind of metal thing, like a, anything at all to hold it up, it will burn and consume the oil into a very black soot. And you put it un, you know, underneath something like your locker or your cell, your bunk, I mean, and let it build up on the bottom, scrape the soot off, and you've got ink, basically. Do you Jeez. use prison tricks in inappropriate situations now that you're free? Like like your McDonald's coffee's too cold and you're like, I got this. And you fucking set the napkin on fire. <laughs> I, haven't had to, I haven't had to whip out any prison skills. I do have them. Like if we ever need a lighter for some reason and the lighter dies, I'm good. I know 40 ways to light a fire without needing a lighter at all. I can't believe that was once an issue in my life. Oh, like shit, boys. The lighter's dead. What are we going to do to smoke this weed? Like back in the day, we're like, oh, no, we got to go to the gas station. Now I'm like, you have a pencil and a paper clip or a microwave, uh, an envelope, a staple, like so many things that I can use, a battery and a piece of steel wool or any kind of thin tin foil. Uh, we can light cigarettes, joints, whatever we need to light. Trust me. Um, I do still eyeball stamps every time that I see mail. My eye checks to see whether the stamp has been pressed or not. Uh, I'm not going to pick it off if it hasn't been pressed. <laughs> uh, I don't have the urge to do so. I was uh, camping this summer and uh, we picked up this guy, rode with his dog on the gas tank. And um, we didn't know him or anything, but he, he was by himself. So we let him sort of join our group for a bit. And uh, I recognized his tattoos as likely to be prison tattoos. Like there's an artistic style and stuff. And we have dinner and he starts putting like expertly putting together some like ramen noodles and Chef Boyardee and turning it into something else. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, dude, is that a prison recipe? And he goes, no. And I say, let me rephrase. Be honest. Is that a prison recipe? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> you, you see somebody make something incredible out of ramen, you already know the business. Yeah. I, I couldn't get a, my head wrapped around the ramen noodle thing. It didn't make sense when that chili existed. It was just so much. It was so good. I, I, I hated the ramen. I ate ramen like three times. I always loved the ramen. I fucked with the ramen tub. I dumped mackerel in it, whatever. It Which was so flavor? versatile. Which flavor of ramen were you a big fan of? Uh, I mostly like spicy chicken, the picante chicken. Yeah. Um, I can no longer eat creamy chicken or the chili flavored kind. Those two... I got very, very tired of those. Creamy chicken, you can taste it for six hours, and the chili one just is burned into my brain because it's all they sold in my jail for like four months at one point. And I just cannot stomach the taste of it anymore. Guys but would, The guys would add mayonnaise, mayonnaise to it. and I, I saw I, that. I saw that shit. Squirt a whole two, three packs of mayonnaise in that bitch. I don't know we, what's up with we that. Had, we had the whole gross. squeeze thing. We had like oh, shelf-stable mayonnaise that, that comes in a, in a fucking squeeze thing. And they, they just would load just, it. They'd load it up, and I was like, oh, no. Gosh. Gross, like, man. Like, you know you can just like boil it and then add that fucking flavor packet, and it's pretty pretty fucking good. It's already pretty bad for you. You don't have to add a bunch of lard to it. It was awful. It was awful. I, I ate a little bit, but mostly I ate those chilies, and I didn't eat much while I was there anyway. Like I the chili pouches ate. off the store? Yeah, those were so fucking yeah, good. Yeah, those were really good. Yeah, I, would, you- I, I did the jalapeno slices in that huge-ass jar, and uh, I see – I didn't know that when you bought jalapeno slices, they were going to give me like a half gallon of them. So I bought like yeah. three jars the first day I got there or something. <laughs> it's like because I thought I was going to stupid ass screw top. Jalapenos. Nobody tells you like how many are going to be in anything. Like like <laughs> so when you buy cheese, yeah. you're like how much you don't know. What you're Is it one slice? Is it a block? You, they don't, you don't know. I wish I had a commissary list still. I've got one somewhere actually. <laughs> it's pretty good shit. I I'll mean, like it I, up. It's about. I that usually long. tell people it's like everything you can get inside of a good gas station. That isn't like the burgers and taquitos and nonsense. Right, like, yeah. Like, everything that's on the shelves. Chili like pouches like, and Vienna sausages, mackerel, ramen, stuff like yeah. that. Toothbrushes Chip, and toothpaste. Chips and sodas and stuff. Just mm. everything that's bad for you. Yeah. What was uh, what was the item that like if you're a new guy and you went to load up on it that you were most likely to be harassed for having? Like if some guy bought like eight packs of chips, is he signing him, himself up to get harassed? Or is it Max? Or is it? I feel like not necessarily. The, the sodas are a hot commodity because at the mediums sodas. they're limited. You can only get a twelve pack, and so people will be like, "What you gonna do with those sodas, man? Are you gonna drink them? Can I sell those? Let me buy those from you because a lot of people drink- sell them. Nah, uh, well, dude, sell them for profit. You know, I don't know if they did that at the oh. camp, but they'll fill up their trash can with ice and have cold sodas, and you can buy one for two stamps, and so they'll turn a little profit on it. You know, 
Mm-hmm. And you yeah. get it already freezing cold. I would so take my be trying giant, to buy them. I would take that giant ass mug and fill it up in the ice machine because uh, we. I don't know about you. We we have access to one of those really nice ice machine that makes yeah a big ass ice machine. We have and uh, I'd fill that thing up and like I put my diet Pepsi like down in it and make a little cooler to like a refrigerator. Yeah, with cool your mug, the off. big clear gallon mug, the big yeah. With the handle, yeah. Huge. That uh, thing was full of ice water yeah, all day. Yeah, it was day. super huge. It worked I, as a cooler for one beverage at a time. Yep. Maybe I've two, always even. wondered wondered this about it. Like, if you go into a prison like you were in, and let's say I'm a guy worth $200 million on the outside. If I go in there and I'm like, I'll take everything from the commissary, I'll take whatever, whatever this, am I a target or am I able to be like, hey – Anybody who comes near me, beat the shit out of them, and I'll give you way more money than anybody here can even compete with. You I too, personally don't think you, it would are, come to that. You don't think so? For what it's worth, there's a spending limit. There's there's a cap oh. at $360 per month that you can spend. Certain things don't come off of that li- limit, like stamps and certain toiletries and hygiene products, but um, well, some stamps, dudes do that. Some funny. dudes go at the start of the month, and they drop their whole spending mm-hmm. limit for the month and then fill up their locker and just eat off it for the month. So, no, I don't think you'd be particularly targeted. You have a lot of bags of store coming back. You'd have to have somebody to help you, but I, nobody's going to just be trying to beg and bum off of you like that. If you're if you're just doing your time and staying out of the way, they're going to stay out of your way. You know. But, but nope. if you wanted to become the pod boss, could you do that pod via boss. the amount of, of – fucking stamps that you acquired like you're just now you're just paying some guy named i don't see why about, not you're talking about a fina- like, like a civilization instead of a domination victory you're trying to get like a i'm trying economic, to win economic economically victory. in my prison <laughs> right. yeah yeah yeah, I, yeah I, probably I you could probably pay some people off i, I, I think it doesn't take around. 200 million to dominate financially the prison population no, you, probably yeah, one you, million will do oh, it. I'm sure, I, I was just I, making I, up a ridiculous probably a hundred grand i was at butner north carolina when people use mackerel as currency boy Hang out in the PK hangout. Maybe Josh Palat will finally reveal his pearl. Yes. I got a pearl when I was locked up, so put that in there. Ooh. Pearl? Does Some that mean a guy bring came a, in your ass? <laughs> a touch of joy to the show. Classic. Thank you, Taylor. No, it's a uh, body modification. Kyle, they weren't doing that at the camp? Getting uh, pearls. What's that again? Getting a pearl put in your dick. What oh, is that? No. Yeah, I got um, one when I was in there. Uh, it's a shaved down piece of a domino is specifically what mine is, shaped as a heart. Um, at which point I had a intoxicated Mexican. He had wine on the breath. Um, let me see here. If we're using this sleeve right here as my shaft, he grabbed the top part of the skin, stretched it up high, and stabbed through both sides of the skin, completely through both layers, oh. through two, two giant holes, stretched it up, pushed the domino in there, and then made me layer it, lower the skin and press it back down over it. And then he showed me how to make a cock sock to tie it so that it would heal up properly. <laughs> cock sock! <laughs> <laughs> you, you chose to do this? Oh, yeah. It actually cost me $21, believe it or not. <laughs> not only did I choose to do it, I paid for it. How does it look? So, and then underneath and then you take it, a roll of toilet paper like so. You take about three squares. You fold it in half, hot dog style like so. Wrap it around the shaft. Make sure that it's good and clean first. You know, put some soap on it. Once you got it tied like so, you grab you another couple squares of toilet paper. You twist them just like you're making a normal wick, like if you're going to try to light a cigarette with it or something like that. You do that, and you wrap it around your dong and tie the bandage in place like so. Until your peen, it basically looks like this until it heals up. And you have a little valentine under the skin of your dick. Yeah, it stands at attention, you know, when it's standing at attention. You can clearly see the heart fully. Uh, The ostensible reward of this is that it is supposed to be very physically pleasing to the females. I'm now married. I do not comment on whether or not it is functional. But I did whenever I made a video about it. (laughs) I did... um, I did say that if it went viral, which it was not even close to doing, that I would prove it. So check out the PK Hangout. Maybe one day in the distant future when they get a million likes... Uh, I'll Wait, show a picture do you, of the do you Do you still have this in your penis? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I'm not going to get it removed. I'll tell you that. If I'd known how bad it was going to get hurt getting it put in, I wouldn't have been able to do it in the first place. But I Thomas underestimated Smith should have told you that. Yeah. I knew it was going to hurt, but I didn't expect to almost pass out. Like, I got woozy oh, eyes I'd rolling get a little back, woozy listening sweat. to you describe it. Uh, yeah, I almost passed knew. out. I had Nobody to get put down knew. in a chair. Pearls hurt. No, wasn't the first time it wasn't the last. <laughs> there will probably be many more adventures like I that. I didn't masturbate the whole time I was there. 30 you're days. trolling me. Did you days. have it? Did you no, have any wet dreams? Me. That's a perfect no. reply. Did you have no. any wet dreams? Days. No, no wet dreams. No, I had no interest in jerking off. I just, I just wanted, I just wanted to go home. I, I'm, I'm telling you, what, what, what Kyle I'm means is that he mind. never. What Kyle means is he never jerked himself off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a distinction here. That but that right cool. forearm was getting strong. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I gave a lot of hand jobs, but none of them. Um, no, I, I really didn't. Like, there was no point the whole time I was there that I that I that I felt like horny or like the desire to jerk off or anything like yeah. that. You're I mean, I didn't. To be horny. The, well, the one thing was how constipated I was when I first got there from stress. Right, like. Right. I can't mm. remember how long it was that I went without shitting. It's not fresh in my mind anymore, but like go back to that whatever I said. I think it was like twenty one days, twenty two days. I think it was nine like, days for me when I got to prison. It, it it was somewhere between ten and twenty days or something that I went with I, I was getting seriously concerned. Yeah, about the like, fact that I had you haven't needed to. You're like, this is gonna pop or something. Yeah, because I didn't feel like constipated. I didn't feel like 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 bloated or anything. I was just like felt totally normal, just hadn't shit. So it's like, what's going on? Like, do I have like like a, a blockage or something like that? Like, like who do I tell about mm. my about my doo doo problem? My impact the colon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Snow. Who do I tell about my doo doo <laughs> problem? There's only one way to fix this problem. <laughs> oh, you get no. fucked in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see those videos where they the the the, the elephant? Has like I don't Ooh, know, it's, it, it's got an impacted colon or whatever, and the the people have to reach all the way into the oh, asshole. Oh, that's so and, funny! And they have to, they end up, they're like, they grab this mass of like plant matter, and I mean, it's imagine it looks like a hundred pom poms stuck together, and and they're just dragging this big ball of it, and when it finally breaks loose, because they've been giving this elephant an elephant sized enema, which of course, oh involves, my god, involves a garden hose at full blast. So finally, it all breaks loose and washes over the person who's back there doing the the deed. And they're (laughs) literally hit by a a tsunami of elephant shit, shit water and plant matter. It's 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 a wonderful thing to see. Don't you oh me! You just talked about cutting your having a Mexican man <laughs> cut you apart and stick a fucking heart. Yeah, you, you, you have you have lost. Sorry, maybe yeah. mom was a little more gnarly. That's Josh, some gangster you, ass shit. You you, you have lost all ugh, privileges. Yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> that's fair. I lost my ugh card. Jesus, uh, this Christ. probably doesn't help, but we did bleach and sanitize everything. Oh, it well, helps a lot. What number Domino was it? I should have asked that. By the way, I don't know if you guys saw in the chat, but Jack, Zach put a picture, and let me tell you, fair warning before you click it. Oh, I don't want to see any any cops I want to see You might not. I'm just giving you guys honest warning here. But that's an oh, example okay. of somebody that has gotten a bunch of them. Like I was Zach, saying, some post, guys get multiple. I'll tell you again, what I have Zach. seen and what yeah, I, I was, was going to let Zach take the blame for that. <laughs> oh, Woody, you posted it. Okay. Oh, it does say Woody over that. No. Oh, this is this is horrible. So now what I, I don't show this. What I would get, but I wouldn't go through the procedure of. Like if you could just beam them in there. I've seen people that have like the little balls. Yeah. Like, like the beads. That's what this picture looks like. Okay, and and they've got a lot of them. Like, yeah, like, that's like what this pa- picture looks like. Okay, like 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 not too many, but you know, a ring of them yeah, or a pattern of them. Uh, this too one's many. too many in this picture. Just speed bumps under, like by the clit. Like that's what I'm thinking. I'd be okay that's, with that. Ostensibly, that's the ultimate goal. Of the clit. That's what's on the top. <laughs> now, for some yeah. reason, I was under the impression. What if we get a like, vibrating egg in there? This is you're, you're selling it. Yeah. Now, now for for like positioning reference here. Let's let's use my finger as a scale, which isn't that far off anyway. Um, <laughs> you would have expected, like I was expecting it to be, you know, back here or so, yeah. but it's oh. more like in the central part. It's more like kind of in the middle here. Fair. So it's about halfway down. I um, and right also, after I figured out how to womp it, I forgot to mention this, before the callus tissue had built up around that thing, when I would figure out my little ghetto way of left-handed weird womping it, uh, sometimes the pearl would be upside down, like... As it is now, the heart faces away from me, but I would look at it and it'd be like towards me and angled crooked, and I'd be like, oh, shit. And then I have to grab it and wrestle that son of a bitch oh, right into position. Fuck, dude. The wrestling part really wasn't that bad. Like, once the scars, the cuts themselves healed up, you can grab that son of a bitch and yank it all up under your skin. It doesn't hurt. Now, if you thump it, it's bad. Like, anything hitting it at all is horrible because it's like pinching that skin really, really hard, you know? But um, what, what led to you deciding to do this? My cellmate hyped me up on it. He got this big, goofy ass four leaf clover. I mean, this damn thing was like the whole bottom half of a domino. He got this big, goofy ass four leaf clover and was hyping it up. Man, the bitches are going to love it and this and this. And I'm over here like I've got like three and a half years before I'm thinking about some bitches, dude. Like I'm not about to get my dick mangled in here. Did it look he, good on he, his dick? And then like it looked cool. man. when he opened the flap up and he showed it to me, I was like, that actually looks pretty fucking sick that it's body modification. I didn't even have any tattoos yet. I actually got body mod before I got any prison tattoos, <laughs> like skipped a couple of fucking steps. I had no tattoos on my body at this time. What prison and, tattoos uh, do you have? Oh, I've got a bunch of them. I got Rocco from Rocco's modern life done with a staple right there. I got innocent sure. on my rib cage and 
Never forget <laughs> down here with some more stuff. I got some skate logos on my back. It came out really crappy because they were done with the staple also. <laughs> uh, I got all kinds of stuff on my leg. I did most of my leg ones. I did this five years. I'm about to knock over my whole desk. I knocked over my water bottle. Five years, an alien, Blink-182. Um, this was supposed to be Albert Einstein. My friend swore to God he could do a pick and poke portrait. He said, trust me, bro. All I need is a staple. I can do a portrait. That was supposed to be Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> I got full screen, full screen, full screen. Back Albert up. Einstein, ladies and gentlemen, in all of his glory. <laughs> Albert Honestly, honestly, that's not bad. <laughs> no, it's fucking bad. He, he debated that. me on that one. I trusted I'll be him. Honest. I'll be honest. I wanted to make fun of it, but they both told the truth already. It's pretty fucking good. It's pretty Dude, fucking it's terrible. Ter- like, you can recognize it because it's Einstein, like one of the most iconic people on the face of the earth. But- What's that? It looks like he spent so much time doing the curve of that nose into the one eye, and, yeah. then, and then he hurried through the rest. <laughs> yeah. Like, he was so hyper focused on, I'm going to get the shading right for the nose and the eye. I'm not going to, I'm just doing a vague outline ever. In his defense, he wanted another two or three sessions on it. After that oh, one session, I was oh, that, like, that would have shaped no. Right <laughs> that one session, I was like, I've already got to get this bitch covered up. Like, we don't have to add no, on to it and make it harder to cover. Tattoo. I'm sick of people calling me fat, but I'm not willing to pull the trigger on not eating a pound of salami. I did last <laughs> night. Delicious. La- literally. No, this was two nights ago. I, I had a big, like, pound pack of salami, like hard salami in my fridge. And I didn't have any cheese or crackers to eat it with, but I wanted to eat it late at night when I was high Send watching it. something. And so <laughs> I ate a whole pound of salami, and my my compliment to it was the rest of the cheese in that uh, that that in calendar that my my wife gave me. <laughs> it was like a daily cheese calendar for December. I, I wolfed through fucking twelve days. This is like an alcoholic I'm... describing how they found an old <laughs> bottle in an alley. <laughs> It yep. is the whole, most hilarious story. <laughs> he got an advent calendar for Christmas. Yes. And it's, it, it has cheese a day. And like the first or second day, he ate half a month worth of cheese and told his wife to get another calendar. I did. I think I ate, <laughs> I, I, I ate six. How many calendars? Seven. How many calendars have you eaten now? Okay, well, I don't. He's in the middle think, of 2063. I don't, I don't even think this is a fair line of question. <laughs> I ate about 16, 17 days on my first cheese binge. And then two nights ago, I ate the remaining 12 or 13 days uh, with not even the kind of salami you're supposed to eat in a charcuterie board. I was just peeling off slices from a pile and eating it. It was good. I enjoyed myself. That's that's sandwich meat. Enjoying yourself good. is the important part. It, it wasn't was like good. it wasn't like out of a package. I got it like from the the butcher section, the good salami Ooh. section. Oh, well, that makes it a little a little part. a little more thick cut, a little nice. Oh, you know what I mean? Put pinky up while you while you. Yes. Ooh, Ritzy. Ooh, pinky's good up salami. for for good heart cheese. failure at fifty one. <laughs> <laughs> I need to weigh in again. I think I I might. I'm pretty good right now. I, no, uh, you're you're usually very. Uh, adamant about your diet when you do get in like you go you know both legs all in when you yeah do. I, I have numbers for people curious i think my fattest ever this is about a year ago was like either 222 or 224 it's, it's one of those and then i got all the way down to 193 which is 29 pounds maybe something like mm-hmm. that a lot and then through like i, I wasn't able to work out and get into it as much as I wanted to because I had that trip around the country where I ate restaurant food for a month and I I just, you break your finger, you fucking break your wrist and whatever. It's hard to work out. Um, but now I'm back down to 196. So I'm three pounds off my low. Did I, yeah, I said that right. So anyway, I think I might be 195 now. I have to weigh in. Nice. I ate an an entire box of Cheez-Its. I want to be. I want to be. I want to be nice. two hundred. I want to be two hundred fifty pounds by July. Two. Oh, I'll, <laughs> hey, Kyle. Hell Kyle, yeah. I'll, I'll race you. Two fifty. For some, I don't know if that's fair. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm going to dominate that race. <laughs> you can't compete. You that's, you couldn't I, stomach I feel, the I amount feel like of that's fatty like meats me, that I can handle. I, I feel like that, but that's like me and you racing to the St. Louis Arch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'd pick if you were to offer me more fat. I'm sorry, more muscle or less fat. 
Like I think I might choose less fat. More, more muscle every time for me. More muscle every time. Fat's yeah. easy to get rid of. Fat's easier to get rid of than muscle it, is to gain. The fat wants to leave. The muscle hates jump, jumping on board. The fat, the, you're like, hey, fat, would you like to leave? He's like, as long as you don't feed me, I'm out of here. I, uh, I, feel, I feel like if you took my mu- shirt off, would I look better with more muscle or less yeah. fat? I think less fat. It's more muscle. No, you, you look better with more muscle because you're already very slim. Yeah. Like you've got visible abs, like Words some more hurt. muscle bulked on there. <laughs> slim is a good thing. I wish <laughs> I was slim. Dude, the pants I fit in now are hilarious. <laughs> I hold them up before I put them on. And I'm like, this is out. This is beyond the pale. Get yourself under control. My, I don't have any pants that fit right now. I like my like. So here, here's two parts of it. One, the pants that were for like skinny me are fatter than the pants that like they're still too fat. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, when I buy new pants. I don't want to commit to this weight. I might not always be this weight. I don't want to buy pants this thin because then there'll be pants that don't fit. So I buy pants you, for a fatter version of me even now. All I mean, my I, pants are I, I, I've said before, if someone broke into my closet and like was looking to steal clothes, they would Gay think couple. four they would think four different men lived here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when because I take of my the size pants difference off, in my in at my the end of the problem. night. I don't unbutton them or anything. <laughs> just pull them off. Pull off. <laughs> I, don't, I, I might be undo the belt, take my pants off. Okay.